Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. It's back to the negotiation table as NWC strike enters second day. Deadly crash claims the life of a Seaford High School student in St. Thomas. And later in sports, legendary racing commentator and administrator Chris Armand is dead. I'm Krista Campbell and here are the details. Health facilities across the island could face tough times ahead as the strike by employees of the National Water Commission, NWC, spills over into a second day. If that's the case, Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says measures are in place to deal with the situation. We have more in this report. The industrial action by employees of the National Water Commission has had an impact on operations of health facilities across the island. If it continues, the consequences will be dire. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Topton says hospitals normally have a reserve of three days' supply of water. So far we've gone one day of the, the shutdown, NWC shutdown, and um, we, we, we should be able to cope today, uh, but as of tomorrow it would become fairly uncertain. So we certainly hope that there's a resolution. Uh, if not, then we'll have to put provisions in place for trucking. NWC President Mark Barnett says about 95% of customers island-wide are without water. Mr. Barnett says some of the equipment were tampered with. It's one thing when you lock the gate and leave the systems uh, as they were, mm -hmm. basically. But it's another when you make adjustments in the network, because that's where the challenge uh, exists. Any adjustment in the network is a recipe for problems. In the meantime, unions representing NWC workers, the management of the commission and representatives of the Ministry of Labor have been meeting in a bid to resolve the issues. Cody Ann Barrett, TVJ News. Over in Westmoreland, at least one school principal says if water lockoffs continue, he will have to cancel classes. Principal of the Little London High School, Garfield James, said it's unfortunate as the lack of water could lead to disruption in the learning process. If by tomorrow the normality has not returned as it relates to the regular water supply, we will not be able to continue having school because I'm not going to, and I don't think the Board of Management will facilitate a situation where we create any scenario that can lead to any possible outbreak. Now, Mr. James added that the school does not have the capacity to store water for a prolonged period without the assistance of the National Water Commission. Create an institution where there is no portable water because, as it is, we still maintain a situation where we adhere to the COVID protocol to ensure that we can ensure the environment is conducive and it's safe. And without the water being supplied on a daily basis, we are going to be in trouble and we are going to see disruption in the learning process. To other news now, a St. Thomas school has been plunged into mourning following the death of 15-year-old Chris Miller yesterday afternoon. As Sandy Williams now reports, his classmates and teachers describe him as a talented student who will be missed. A visibly damaged motorcycle and bloodstains at a section of the Prospect Main Road in St. Thomas. Signs of the crash that claimed the life of 15-year-old Chris Miller and injured another. It happened about 1 p.m. on Tuesday. Miller was a grade 10 student at the Seaforth High School. Yesterday was a very sad day, sad day in school when we heard the news of his passing. And um, we were looking forward, forward for him to continue his Tight is trade as a footballer for the school, coming with upcoming Beat Lacas Cup season. Very talented young man, um, very jovial, um, always, always having a smile on his, on his face. Um, he doesn't move, he doesn't move that swiftly, but if you run upon him too, too hard, you're bound to be defeated. Very talented player, um, it's just a sad, sad time for Seaford High School at this moment. Good morning, good afternoon, our news team visited the school Wednesday morning. Flowers were placed on the desk that the deceased student occupied during classes. 
The news of Miller's death was a hard pill to swallow for his classmates. Andre Anderson, who was Miller's football coach, says the youngster will be missed. He will be surely missed, and more, all the footballers are very, very sad, especially his close friends that, that are coming up with him from the seventh grade. According to reports, Miller was driving a motorcycle with a pillion behind a great Toyota Wish motor car, both vehicles heading towards Morant Bay. The driver of the car reportedly indicated to go to the right side of the road when Miller allegedly attempted to overtake the car. The bike then crashed into the car before slamming into a utility pole. Miller and his pillion were rushed to the Princess Margaret Hospital where he was pronounced dead. The pillion has been admitted. Sandy Williams, TVJ News. Residents in some St. Anne communities are living in fear. This follows a breakaway in their area, which is putting their lives at risk, as Shamela Pullen now reports. Deadly breakaway. Residents in Cascade, Cofferidge, Fraser and Davistown say they have been living in fear for the past four months. You know, say, good why no breakaway today from your shower rain, from the heavy rain business. And since you unchuck the pass and... As the truck passed, the road just steered out. One way in, one way out. Sometimes the big truck them come down where, 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 where I carry the market people them. The road, here so now I carry how much, how much thousand load upon the truck them. The road already him crack up. The road crack up. So if you look now, you see the cracking of the road. It's not the first time they have highlighted the issue. And with each passing day, the situation is worsening. As right now, if you see it, there will be a dirt underneath the road now. It's called the brokeway. So each side rainfall is so quick and brokeway when heavy vehicle go on it. This is a farming community. 99% of the people in this area they are farmers, and that is their livelihood. And they depend on the road to take out their produce to market. And even the Exporter, they refuse to come into the area, now to buy from them. Counsel for the Borough Bridge Division, Winston Brown, says approval was given for the road to be fixed from December last year. At January meeting, I was told that the request sent to the Minister of Local Government, Desmond Mackenzie, for further approval. And since January, every month, every other day, I call, I attend the council, I, I went to meeting only to be heard. It is on the mayor, the minister's desk. Member of Parliament for Southwest St. Anne, Xavier Main, says, although this is a parish council road, he has been in dialogue with the local government minister, Desmond Mackenzie, and minister with responsibility for works, Everald Warmington. He says plans are well advanced for it to be rehabilitated. Shamela Pullen, TVJ News. We take our first break here on the Midday News, but stay with us. More stories when we return. Welcome back to the Midday News. The parliamentary opposition is suggesting that the government pumps money into the National Health Fund, NHF, to ensure it remains viable. Opposition spokesman on health, Dr. Maurice Guy, made the call during his sectoral presentation to Parliament Tuesday evening. Last week, Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton said the NHF needs $40 billion over the next three years to continue helping the sick. Dr. Guy is therefore urging the government to act quickly. With the proposed tobacco legislation having some changes that may impact the taxation from this source, there has to be a serious look as to how the viability is protected and maintained. Our view, Madam Speaker, is that the Ministry of Finance should ensure a direct budgetary allocation each year for the National Health Fund to ensure that increased demands on the National Health Fund are matched by increased subvention from central government coffers and that it is not left up to the Minister of Health to determine how much the National Health Fund gets. He adds that the proposal for a national insurance scheme should be urgently implemented to reduce the burden on the NHF. The process was stalled due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Although this green paper was tabled in 2019, we have not heard anything further three years down the road. We cannot have essential documents and important policies left behind and blame it on COVID-19. It must be appreciated 
that with the development of a national health insurance scheme, the financial stresses on the National Health Fund could be reduced. 208 cases are down for trial as the Easter term of the St. Anne's Circuit Court opened on Monday in St. Anne's Bay. 44 of those matters are murder trials, gun court matters, and cases of a sexual nature. In her opening remarks, trial judge Simone Wolf reese welcomed the return of jurors after two years. She's also challenged members of the private bar and investigators to work diligently so the long list of cases can be reduced significantly and justice dispensed in a balanced way way. Attorney at Law in St. Anne, Linton Gordon, says with 44 murders to be mentioned, it is a cause for concern for the parish. However, he noted that some are not new cases. Some of them have been awaiting the resumption of jury trial, and frankly, there are quite a few cases that are recent events as part of the escalation in crime throughout Jamaica in recent times. But I think that working, cooperating, um, exercising the option of trial without jury, trial with jury, we can get there and reduce the list to some acceptable. Now the circuit court will last for four weeks. A mother of six is this afternoon expressing gratitude after she received a house for her family. As Sandy Williams now reports, the initiative was a collaboration between two charity groups. Suzette Wilson, who resides in Carotou Hill, Maypen Clarendon, has been living with her children and spouse in a rundown shack for a while. Last December, the 39-year-old mother made a plea for assistance to get a home for her family. Miss Wilson had explained that she has a back problem that prevents her from doing labor-intensive work and that her children's father has been diagnosed with arthritis in both shoulders, which hinders him as well. She also added that two of the children are asthmatic. One has two holes in her heart and the other suffers from joint pains. I've been through it. I cannot leave with me have to go to my church and at night time I cannot push out to go to church because where I live here so in that house and five girls with the one I don't make six girls. Six girl child, no, me cannot leave them. At the end I night to go to church. Only like Sunday, no, we can't go to church. Last week, Food for the Poor, in collaboration with Boss Mom, a charity group for mothers, gifted the mother of six with a home, appliances, food, and other goods. We spoke with development and marketing manager at Food for the Poor Jamaica. The poor, what we are doing right now is really and truly trying to change a community. So as we give a house, we don't just want to give the house and leave. We want to see how we can help the community. So we go in, we look on the community, do an assessment and see how we can help those persons who are in need. In order to change the nation, we have to teach them how to fend for themselves. I'm not satisfied with just giving a house, which is why it's so important that we're able to to um, encourage her to go into business so that she can continue to sustain herself. So an initiative that MDS has taken on in providing them with products that they can now go and resell, they can become resellers for the brand um, and, and other companies are going to be doing it as well. It gives them an opportunity to earn so that they can continue to sustain their families. Thanks be to God, I feel very, very good because a long time we did want somewhere. I me give God thanks and praise because without his mercy, I wouldn't reach to so far. And I thank all the people that come in and help me with this house over my head with me and my kids. Sandy Williams, TVJ News. Time now for the Business Minute. Here's Cody and Barrett. In the world of business, Fontana Pharmacy is reporting an increase in profits by more than 40% for its third quarter ended March at $104.6 million. 
For the same period last year, Fontana's post-tax profit amounted to $72.9 million. The company's revenues also grew. It earned $1.52 billion, representing an increase of 24%. For the quarter ended March 2021, the company earned $1.22 billion. Local lottery company Izizi is introducing a new network of games to the Jamaican market. The new gaming machines are called Video Lottery Terminal VLTs. The VLTs are being launched with four games. Operator of Izizi Lottery Games, Mahoma Gaming, says the machines will provide job opportunities and bring new technology to the local gaming market. And that's it for the Business Minute. I'm Cody Ann Barrett. And here's a preview of what's coming up in this evening's health report. In this evening's health report, we look at attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. There's reason for hope because I've seen um, children who get help, like one stands out, uh, he was struggling and with help he became an engineer. Another one, he was struggling a lot and with help he's a doctor now. Um, uh, and many of the kids uh, who got help in time have uh, turned their life around and they're happy and successful and so are their parents. So there's no need to despair and give up. Um, there's help and once we work together with parents and teachers, uh, we can expect a lot of improvement. However, uh, we need to educate parents and teachers and that's happening as we speak. That's the health report in primetime news at seven. And you know for today's healthy living tip. If you're a student with ADHD, sit in the front of class to limit distractions. Turn off your phone when doing homework. Talk with your teacher about ADHD. Use tools that help you stay organized and learn to meditate. For the top regional and international story, we go to Sandy Williams. In the region, Bahamas Prime Minister Philip Davis on Tuesday urged the Commonwealth to lend its voice on matters relating to climate change, calling also for access to climate funding. He says the time has come for that voice to be amplified to ensure that a proper response is given from the world on this existential threat. He identified funding as an area which must be vigorously tackled, adding that the process for accessing climate financing is so torturous that many small island states have not been able to get funds they need. His comments come as the Commonwealth gears up for the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in Kajali, Rwanda next month and the COP27 in Egypt. On the international scene, Sri Lanka has ordered troops to quote, shoot on sight anyone damaging state property or assaulting officials. This comes after protests in the capital, Colombo, that left at least eight people dead. Thousands have taken to the streets angered by the government's handling of a worsening economic crisis. The resignation of Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaska did little to appease demonstrators. Many protesters say their ultimate aim is to force his brother, President Gotabaya Rajapaska, out of office. And those were the top regional and international stories. I'm Sandy Williams. We head to another break now, but stay tuned. Simon Preston is standing by with your midday sports report when we return. Welcome back. It's now time for Midday Sports. I'm Simon Preston. Legendary racing commentator and administrator Chris Armand is dead. Armand, who spent over four decades in the racing industry, died this morning at the University Hospital of the West Indies after ailing for a while. Armand, who held the post of Director of Racing at Supreme Ventures Racing and Entertainment Limited, SVREL, up to December 2020, was considered the standard for horse racing commentary throughout the region. We'll have more details and reactions in primetime sports this evening. To football we go now, as the Reggae Boys' friendly against the Basque country in Spain on May 27 has been postponed. The Basque Football Federation have announced that the match has been postponed due to failure to acquire the necessary permits to stage the game. The BFF has apologized to the JFF and has agreed to a game in the future at a date convenient to both teams. Jamaica will play Catalonia in Spain on May 25. 
Meanwhile, Peterborough United striker Johnson Clark Harris has received a Jamaican passport in order to represent the reggae boys. The 27-year-old confirmed this via his Instagram page on Tuesday. Clark Harris, who qualifies to play for Jamaica through his parents, scored 11 goals in 38 appearances for the championship club last season. Having the passport also makes him eligible to play for Jamaica in the CONCACAF Nations League against Mexico and Suriname next month. Clark Harris is also expected to make his debut for Jamaica against Catalonia later this month. Defending champions Manchester City can maintain their lead atop the English Premier League table when they travel to Molyneux to take on Wolverhampton Wanderers this afternoon in a 2.15 kickoff. City and Liverpool are tied on 86 points, but the citizens have a superior goal difference while the Reds have played 36 games in comparison to City's 35. The day's other game sees relegation threaten Leeds United in 18th position, away third place Chelsea at Ellen Road. 16th place Everton, who are also in a relegation battle, square off with the already relegated Watford, while less City welcomed the already relegated Norwich City at the King Power Stadium. Those matches kick off at 1.45. Cricket now, as former New Zealand captain Brendan McCallum has emerged as a contender for the vacant role as England's test coach following two days of interviews at Lords. McCallum, who is in his third season as a KKR Riders head coach in the IPL, has never coached a first-class game and was widely expected to be a candidate for the white ball job. It is possible that an appointment will be ratified before the end of the week with England's first test of the summer against New Zealand, McCallum's home country, on June 2. And that is it for your Midday Sports Report. I'm Simon Preston. Krista, it's over to you. Thank you so much, Simon. And that's all the news we have for today. I'm Krista Campbell. But remember to join us again at 7 for primetime news. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, have a good afternoon.